Wouldn't you just love it if a tech support scammer really slipped up and accidentally give you access to his PC? I would root around to see what information he has on me, to see how he makes his calls and what sort of other files might be lying around. I would have a look at his browsing history to see what he gets up to in his spare time. Well, it just so happens that's exactly what happened to me just a few days ago. Uh, hello. Yeah, hi, hi, sir. This is Edward. Edward once again. Ah, uh, hello there. Hi. Yes, you were ringing a minute ago with something about my computer. All right. So the reason behind the call today, sir, is to let you know about some error and warning files which are running on your computer without your knowledge. So are you in front of the computer at the moment? Uh, yes. Uh, let me start it up here. One second. The four flag design windows key with the letter R, both the keys together. So, number of administrative uh, number of events, uh, one thousand three hundred and twenty-two. There's like oh my goodness error, errors, warnings. Now, without uh, wasting any more time of yours, sir, I would be simply asking you, like, have you ever seen these problems before? Do you have any basic idea what are they, how they got inside your computer? No idea, sorry, no. I'll tell you, sir. These are the malicious corrupted error and warning files about which I was trying to explain in the beginning of the call, okay? Right. These are very, very harmful and dangerous. The error indicates that more than 60% of your software are already corrupted, and the yellow triangle warning signifies that your computer security is at risk, okay? Right. Now, these are the problems about because of which the functionality of your computer is getting hampered day by day. Now, once again, give a click on the OK option, which you see below there. Okay. And tell me, just do let me know when you see the TeamViewer page coming on the screen, all right? Okay. Now, uh, put in there on that partner ID column, 584-095-901. 584 581, did you say? 901. 901. Okay. And give connect. a click on connect to partner. Right. Now, DC is asking for the password. Yeah. You type in there on the password Windows, all in the lower case. Windows. Okay. Now, now once it's done, then give a click on log on. Hello. Now, do you see at the very top, the option says communicate. Yeah, okay. Uh, Give a click on communicate. Yeah. Now, once you give a click on communicate, once you give a click on communicate, have you given a click on communicate? Yeah. Now, Sorry. just beside communicate, do you see the option which says connect to partner? Yeah, okay. Sorry. Um, Hey, what are you doing? Sorry, I don't know what I'm clicking on at the bottom here. I can't see, communi can't don't see try communicate. To... Which one do at I At the very to top, do you see? In the very top. Yeah. Do I need to... What do I need to do? To... I can't find it there. Oh, hang on. It seems to have crashed. Hi, are you still there? Hey, you mother... Hey, hey you motherfucker. Well, you are, you're the one who's scamming, aren't you? Marachode. Hey, you motherfucker. Well, uh, it was good to capture everything that I saw on your desktop. You're a bit stupid, aren't you? So he hung up at this point, but I had plenty of information to go on. I run Wireshark, of course, and I had his IP address. And the IP address points to location in Noida, which is a suburb of New Delhi. For me, the most interesting part of the scam was seeing the software they use. It's open source code called VICI Web Client, and they have the bare minimum of information on me. They have the phone number, a title which is wrong, just an initial of the first name, a surname, and a postcode. So where might this have come from? 
Well, I'm only speculating, but that's exactly the same information you would see if you look up a phone book. So this is an online search on BT site. And as you can see, you see an initial, a surname, a postcode, and no title. So I would imagine they're using a slightly out of date phone book. So what about the spreadsheet that we saw? Well, the first line, CB is call back next day to talk to husband. The next line is something about calling back a woman, ma'am, about an apple. The next one I can't really understand because it's about a telly before nine, but that's a call back again. The next one's again to a man, sir, who's either bought or going to buy a new computer because his looks like his son has broken something and he's got a laptop and an iPad. The next one is a laptop for a woman, ma'am, which has got something wrong with it. Call back a man who was cooking lunch. In five minutes, number given, very scared. That is quite a scary one to me. They obviously don't care if they scare the people they ring. The next one is a man, sir, computer in repair and call back on Monday. The next one, sir, again, call back on the 16th because his computer is in repair. Again, a man to be called back this time at 10. Call back a woman who was sick at 11. Don't care much for sick people. Call back a woman and I'm not sure what the rest of that is. So that's his call back list. I did call all of the people on this list and the majority didn't realize that it was a scam. You can see at least 20 numbers on the spreadsheet and that makes it profitable for a scammer to ring people at random from the phone book in the hope that they do have some sort of genuine computer problem and the scammer can get a payment. I've given the Indian cell phone number, the Harami number, a call, but I get no answer. However, I would like to hear from you if your name's Peter Holdstock and you think this might be you. So what about a friend's browser history? Well, as expected, the most visited site is his login for the Autodal web client. Not unexpected. But the next most recently used one was just an MP3 from Pagala World. This is probably copyrighted MP3, so I'll link to it. Then he looks for the time in the UK. And obviously, that's to make sure his calls aren't too late. There's just a GIF that he's accidentally clicked on his client. And the last one here is an MP3 of a Bollywood movie called Zindagi. Truthfully, it was hoping for something a bit more juicy than this. But there we go. That's all I could get. So I think I found a whole lot out about our scammer. First of all, that he was based in Noida, a common call center location. And more in particular, I found out what software they use and what their mechanisms are for chasing that up. The software is a common open source dialer client and it integrates with Xlite. I see that he holds a bare minimum of information, probably from the phone book, and he also records each of the calls that he needs to follow up. I have no idea how many calls he made, but it must amount to quite a few. He also takes notes on people that he'd rather not speak to again. And we learned a little bit about his browsing history, but it's not quite as juicy as I hoped it would be. So that's it for this one. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and please hit subscribe.